Well, I'm not sure if this is a good idea or a crazy idea, because uh, you're dealing with a person who's cleaning a lake. Great idea. He's got a PhD, I'm not sure what in. Could be sociology for what I know. It could be engineering. He calls himself an entrepreneur, which is a good sign, perhaps? He says it's very expensive to clean lakes. Okay, that's understandable. Uh, you can have a lot of pollutants in there. He uses organic material. It looks like bran or, um, I don't know, it looks, like, it looks like oats. It looks like oats. And supposedly he put this in and it stays on the surface. It collects the dirt. The dirt kind of goes to it and it's edible because it's 100% organic. I don't want to know what's in your lake. Probably fetal matter and other things that could be very much fermented and could be very bad for you. So I don't think that's a great idea per se. Um, what else? He wants to clean a lake in Peru, large lake in Peru, clean it up. Good venture. Um, okay, that sounds great. How are you going to do it? Through nanotechnology, he says. Now, I took the liberty of putting a little definition underneath this particular post. Yes, I'm using my Treble Red Cell account on Facebook. Um, basically, you have the definition of what a piece of nanotechnology is. It's something which is smaller than 10 nanometers. So consider that. Is he actually dealing with nanotechnology? Or is he dealing with the fact that, oh, you end up with a reaction which is simply down to putting a load of, um, you know, very helpful chemicals together... Uh, organic chemicals, I think that's just, you know, a side note. I don't think he's going down the route of saying, you know, oh, it's organic, man, that means it's not GMO. I, I couldn't give a fuck about that. Um, I think it's just a question of that you're not putting hazardous chemicals in there, things that may well cause other problems, such as with other cleaning and um, cleansing, uh, like agents you could put into a lake to clean it, which would probably kill the fish if there are any, or kill any potential life, uh, if you go too far at least. So, um, I can understand why that is a point. I've clicked on his page. It doesn't actually say on his page what his PhD is in either. So, um, you know, Dr. Marino, I just really don't know what your background is. You could have an honorary degree. You could be a very well-qualified um, MD for I know. And I do think that some of the ideas involved were quite helpful. You know, some of the ideas of, um, you know okay, we're going to clean the environment, we can do this in, like, 40% of the world's lakes are, uh, lakes and rivers are polluted, okay, well, that's inevitable, and it's also something which we, we can deal with. I'm not sure this particular treatment would work out so well in rivers, um, because you're dealing with a material, in fact, it's shown in the video, I'll mute that, I don't want to watch the video again, um, he shows in water, there, oh, it's dirty water, and you've got your material, your solution, which just looks like, I don't know, it looks like oats, as I said, and you put it in there, bam, and look, you end up with a separation, which looks pretty good. Probably depends on the kind of stuff you've actually got in your lake, because if chemical and biological filth of any kind, you know, if it's fetal matter, it probably will float to the surface. But you're not going to want to do what he does here. Oh, yes, environmentally friendly... And you can eat it. Many of the world's lakes are full with chemical toxins that will poison you. You know, if, if anyone ever goes over to uh, some of the more poisoned areas of the developing world, you'll know what I mean. Um, also, if you're dealing with very often sewage overflow and other issues like that, the locals have to boil the water to basically make it safer if it's a sewage issue. But, yeah, I'm not keen on eating fetal matter, but, but uh, despite the rumours. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, basically, um, yeah, I just don't think it's necessarily the perfect idea. And, oh, it's because it's 100% organic. Yes, your material is 100% organic. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be 100% organic once it's absorbed, I don't know, X amount of a, I don't know, a cleansing agent or... I don't know, a dump-like amount which has leaked into the water table of an area which is basically um, a form of, I don't know, pesticide. So a chemical pesticide used in China, for example, I'm just using China as an example because I know how bad the environmental fallout is over there. Um, basically, you end up with those chemicals being dumped, 
Um, you know, the barrels or whatever, if they're even kept in reasonable conditions, will still leak. It gets into the water table, poisoning the land, and it can go into the rivers and streams and, and lakes. And uh, as you'd imagine. And if you absorb that into an organic material, it means you're probably getting a non-organic, uh, you know, petrol based chemical, perhaps because it's, you know, cheap. Um, basically being absorbed by the organic matter. And if you eat that, you will poison yourself to some mild degree. So there are losses. I think in many cases, especially with those chemically poisoned dumps, it's going to be a question of burying it. You know, you're going to have to dump this stuff in landfill, which isn't a bad idea because if it's uh, organic anyway, it will break down. Now, how intensive is this stuff? Well, he explains later on in the video that it is very expensive because he wants to cleanse the world. He's got the idea of going to uh, Peru. He shows money here, doesn't he? You can get it. There it is. It's going to cost a shitload of money to clean a lake in Peru. And that's because of the intensive farming necessary to create the, um, the organic material to absorb most of the um, filth within those lakes. And of course, you don't want to go too far either. I mean, I don't think they would. If you go too far with cleansing a lake, you don't just simply remove the, uh, the toxins. And many lakes are naturally uh, meant to be uh, vaguely toxic anyway. So the life, if there is any, has evolved in that direction. But um, you basically end up with it being very intensive in terms of production. And then most of it will just end up being dumped because it's essentially holding non-edible um well, elements, whether they're biological or chemical. I mean, you know, biological stuff is chemical anyway, but whether it's a biological uh, amount of debris that's in there, say, for example, you know, a sewage overflow has basically poisoned a lake, or whether it's a chemical poisoning or dumping in a lake or near to a lake which has poisoned the lake, well, it's still going to be a problem. And as I said earlier, um, rivers might be an issue. Moving bodies of water will not necessarily react the same, meaning that you won't necessarily get the same results. So in that case, using filters and other methods to try and filter out any filth coming in would be an issue. Also, with uh, those areas which are poisoned by, say, um, poor sanitary conditions, uh, poor regulation in terms of chemicals, if the chemical issue of the poisoning is not stopped, there will simply be a period of cleanliness which is then replaced by a period of increased dirtiness until it reaches the point of, well, being pretty much the same as it was before. Say, for example, spilt oil and chemicals, say, from the, the big oil industry, from other major um, users of uh, chemicals and dumpers, say, for example, like the military. So in those cases, you'll still see major issues. And I think people should take that on board as well. So I'm being quite sceptical, but I do think it's a great idea. I just don't think it's the best idea since sliced bread. It's probably better than sliced bread. But in any case, it's not necessarily the best thing in the world.